The U.S. Navy and its two nuclear submarine builders are closing on a sweeping multi-year agreement that would package 10 Virginia-class attack submarines from the forthcoming Block 6 configuration with five Columbia-class ballistic missile boats, a combined by intended to lock in production tempo, cushion the industrial base from economic shocks, and prevent force-level dips as older hulls leave service. Negotiators from General Dynamics Electric Boat and HII's Newport News Shipbuilding have been working with Navy acquisition officials to pin down price, schedule, and scope, with the objective of finishing the deal before the end of 2025. The prospective award is structured to authorize long lead materials and labor planning even under stop-start federal funding, a recognition that undersea shipbuilding is a years-long relay in which missed batten passes reverberate for a decade. Industry leaders and Navy planners described the package less as a single contract than as an operating rhythm for the next tranche of undersea construction. In practical terms, that rhythm means sustaining the two boats per year cadence on Virginia's while Columbia proceeds on a timeline that preserves continuous strategic deterrence patrols. Those efforts draw on overlapping factories, machine shops, and high skill trades. Welding, nuclear pipe fitting, Reactor manufacturing, and acoustic coating application are niche competencies that cannot be surged on command. A multi year vehicle gives suppliers predictable demand signals, allowing them to hire apprentices, lock in component orders, and schedule module work in a way that minimizes idle bays and expensive restarts. The choice to anchor the attack sub portion in Block 6 reflects a broader pivot in the program's evolution. Building on the payload expanded approach introduced with Block V, Block 6 maintains the Virginia payload module, a hull plug with four large diameter tubes capable of hosting a significant number of land attack missiles, and then layers in a new generation of sensors and combat system upgrades aimed at improving detection ranges and reducing acoustic signatures. From a fleet planning perspective, Block 6 is the bridge from the remaining Los Angeles-class retirements to a stable Virginia force equipped for distributed maritime operations, long-range strike, and covert intelligence collection. For the yards, the bridge is just as much about sequencing. The final Block V units must clear critical workstations as the first Block 6 material packages arrive, or bottlenecks will ripple across the waterfront. On the strategic side, Columbia has been described by Pentagon officials as a no-fail effort. Each hull is designed around a life-of-ship reactor core that removes the need for midlife refueling, an electric drive propulsion train for quieter operation, and an extern arrangement to refine maneuverability and further dampen noise. Sixteen tubes for Trident 2D-5 LE missiles preserve the deterrent punch while the class aims for more predictable maintenance cycles than its predecessors. Because the ballistic missile fleet is sized to maintain an unbroken at-sea presence, schedule variance is not merely a budget problem, it directly affects national-level alert posture. That imperative has shaped the proposed buys scaffolding, aligning module deliveries, reactor fabrication, and final assembly slots across Electric Boat and Newport News so that neither program steals oxygen from the other. Budget turbulence has complicated the path to the finish line. Continuing resolutions hinder new program starts and delay contract definitization, even when Congress ultimately provides the funds. In recent years, rising labor and material costs have forced suppliers to reprice quotes multiple times, while workforce churn in specialized trades has increased training loads and slowed throughput. The Navy and the Primes have responded with workforce stabilization measures, including targeted compensation adjustments, expanded apprenticeship programs, and investments in dry dock modernization and testing infrastructure. Multi-year authority is the policy lever that ties those moves together, it allows material to be purchased in economic quantities, reduces exposure to inflation by locking in multi-hole buys, and preserves learning curve gains that would otherwise decay in a stop-start environment. The industrial web beneath the two programs is vast and delicate. Thousands of subcontractors produce everything from high-tolerance reactor components and pump jet elements to sonar arrays, masts, coatings, and pressure hull sections. Many of these suppliers are single-point sources by design, a function of nuclear-grade qualification requirements and long certification lead times. 
When a surge of orders arrives without warning, or dries up unexpectedly, those thin nodes can become critical path constraints. The planned package is an attempt to smooth those shocks by broadcasting a firm build sequence years in advance. That certainty enables second and third tier vendors to invest in tooling, train new crews, and expand shifts with confidence that demand will persist long enough to amortize the cost. Operationally, the Navy argues the combined approach is about maintaining undersea leverage against peer adversaries as maritime competition intensifies. Attack submarines carry the burden of intelligence collection, anti-submarine and anti-surface warfare, special operations insertion, and long-range conventional strikes, often in contested waters where stealth is survival. Ballistic missile submarines, meanwhile, form the sea-based leg of the strategic triad, their credibility hinges on quieting, availability, and predictable deployment cycles. Marrying the production flows acknowledges that these missions are interdependent in practice. A force short on attack boats cannot adequately screen the bastions where SSBNs operate, and delays in SSBN construction would compress deterrent coverage windows in ways that increase risk. The stakes are felt in workforce planning as much as in fleet metrics. Experienced nuclear-qualified welders and electricians are not interchangeable with general industrial labor, and their training pipelines can run years. Program managers have warned that, without stable task loading, attrition can erode capability faster than hiring can replace it, especially in coastal labor markets where commercial ship repair and other heavy industries compete for the same talent. One subtle aim of the impending deal is to make the trades a safe bet for early career workers, a years-long backlog at known wages, consistent hours, and a clear advancement ladder. The primes have paired that with outreach to community colleges and technical high schools, pitching submarine construction as a generational project with national security weight. There are technical risks, but program officials tend to frame them as integration challenges rather than unknown physics. The Virginia line has already demonstrated the payload module approach on Block V, and Block VI's acoustic and electronic upgrades fit within established margins. For Columbia, the most novel elements, life of ship core and electric drive, have been the focus of intensive prototyping and component testing, with early investments in land-based test facilities designed to burn down risk before installation. What keeps managers up at night is timing, a late valve delivery here, a slipped coding application there, and the Gantt chart starts to drift. The proposed multi-year procurement gives schedulers the room to build slack where it matters and the authority to pull long lead triggers earlier when suppliers signal stress. If executed as envisioned, the package would do more than add whole numbers to a spreadsheet. It would reassert a production discipline that U.S. high-end shipbuilding has struggled to maintain since the post-Cold War drawdown, when yards consolidated and supply chains thinned. A predictable drumbeat through the late 2020s and early 2030s would keep module shops warm, preserve tacit knowledge that only accrues on the waterfront, and give the Navy a credible path to recover attack sub inventories while fielding a new generation of SSBNs without deterrent gaps. None of that guarantees on time, on budget delivery, it does set the conditions for it, which is as much as any acquisition strategy can honestly claim. Ultimately, the story here is one of alignment, aligning budgets with production reality, aligning two flagship programs that share critical resources, and aligning the demands of today's fleet with the imperatives of the next 30 years. Ten Virginias and five Columbias is the headline, but the substance is the cadence beneath it, award sequence to avoid troughs, materials ordered before bottlenecks form, people trained and retained because the work is steady. In an era when maritime competition is sharpening and industrial resilience is as strategic as tonnage, that cadence may prove to be the decisive advantage the Navy is buying.